that Springfield, out of the three major school systems, is the high, has the highest number of incarcerated youth. And we're funneling our kids into the prison industrial complex. And that has to stop. And these kids aren't being put away for violence or drugs or hurting people. They're being put away for having temper tantrums, getting angry in class, slamming doors, maybe a locker. So, really, slamming a locker, is that worth the rest of your life? No. So thank you. As Sister Angela Davis puts it, it's not simply because a person commits a crime. Because those who commit crime in this country are very unlikely to be caught with the crimes they're committing. Yeah. All right, so this effort to incarcerate black and brown bodies is because simply the fact that they're black and brown bodies. And now we're seeing the onslaught of the LGBTQT community, of children. This is something that this justice system is doing. So we're here together right now to show that this won't continue anymore, especially not in Springfield, especially not in Springfield. <laughs> Dr. King argued that everybody wants to be first, but if you definitely want to be first, be first in love, be first in justice. So let's continue to be first. Let's remember ourselves as those who stood for justice here today. We're building coalitions, all right? So we can address this issue not only in Springfield, but in Massachusetts, right. and let the country know yeah, yeah. that Massachusetts is representing against mass incarceration and against the incarceration of black and brown bodies. That's right. I'm Mike Land. I work with Arise for Social Justice in Springfield. Um, you know, they say, and I don't think I have to define who they is, right? You know, they, they think that if they keep us poor enough, if they keep putting more of us in jail, um, if they keep us spending all our free time getting high and watching TV, you know, they think that they can keep us quiet and that that's going to be good enough. Well, you know what? I don't think so. I, I think our community is waking up. I see this all the time. I'm seeing it here in this city. I see it right here when I look around at the people who are here. Now, we got a lot of responsibility. Those of us that are here have got a lot of responsibility in the community to keep spreading the word and letting other folks know what's going on and knowing that change is possible and that we can make that change. Uh, but we, we got a lot of responsibility and we got to take it on. Um, I believe that we are ready to take back our power and that we are going to do that with the dignity of knowing that we are human beings and we have rights. And we are going to do that, we are going to do that with respect. Not only respect of each other, but even respect of some of the people that work for the institutions that oppress us. Because they didn't create those institutions. You know, they're just there getting a paycheck and getting bitter and cynical, and we've got a responsibility to them too. And we are going to do it with the peace that comes from knowing if we don't have justice, we can't have peace. So we've got to fight for justice. We're doing it right here, right now, today. And just finally I want to say to the family and friends of Charles Wilhite that you have taken a moment of great anguish and pain for your brother Charles. And you have taken that and you have made a gift of it to the community to bring us together to fight for rights. Love and respect to you. It's wonderful this morning, this afternoon. The sun decided she was going to come out and she wasn't going to let it rain on us. And she knew how important this moment was for us. Because the universe knows to line itself up when we start talking about justice and we start talking about freedom and we start talking about struggling and we start talking about just like the planets to come together and to do what's right. It's wonderful that we're talking about getting 
the housekeeping of Springfield in order for its residents, for its families, for its communities. This is a moment where on this ground in this, in this park, which was dedicated to World War II veterans, it's wonderful for us to come back on hollow ground because it's so important that we take back not only our power like Michael Land was talking about, but that we exercise our power because that's something that we've always had. It's not something that we've given away. It's just something that we've let lie down someplace. You know, we've got progress going on, even in the absence of the death of one of our community members over on Orleans and Union Street. Sister Betty, again, is, is, is going to be out here with us later on to tell us more about what's going on. But we've lost several young people over the past week. Everyone too soon to go, just like we lost Alberto Rodriguez, who Charles is being, who, who, who Charles has been convicted of. You know, our lives are inextricably linked together. And we have to always remember that, that we have a responsibility to ourselves and to each other to struggle, to coalition, to make right where we see wrong. So today is not about, many of us have taken several steps toward justice and equality and freedom. But for those of us who today is the first step, let us push each other on. Let's be strong here with Charles and let's get Charles taken care of. Because there's one thing in Charles's story that we can't forget, that this is always going on. This isn't something new. And that it's gonna continue on until we tell all of the, is the invisible and the present institutions that our lives intersect with every day. That we can't live like this anymore. It's not good enough for our children. It's not good enough for us. Hello everyone, welcome to our uh, peace rally. Um, and, and I mean, I'm big on peace, but you know, we, we need peace. We need more peace. Um, thank, first, thanks everyone for coming out on the behalf of my family, Charles. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a nice day. I thought it was going to rain out, but here we are. I'm gathered here to uh, to get some good information, um, positive. We're not here to beat up on um, Anybody. anyone. Not the police, not the, the Commonwealth, not anyone. Uh, they already know their roles and they know what needs to happen, but we're here to make sure that uh, something happens. What it is, uh, is uh, try to restore a relationship that's so divided um, between the, 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 the force of whatever it is and the people, because it's about the people. If it wasn't about the people, we wouldn't be here right now. Look at all you smiling faces. I don't see one angry face in the crowd, and that's amazing that we could come together and um, a lot of positive. Uh, you know what just happened? I just went by to see the victim's family, and it was a... a, a yeah, there's another, yeah, there's another brother. Um, of a, the one that was most recently murdered over on Orleans Street, uh, the family, and um, I'm glad they came out. Uh, but I was going to see um, Alberto Rodriguez's family to say that you are welcome to come, and, and, and it's tough for the mother because she's still grieving. It's, it's tough for her, and they said they would be here um, to, to express how they feel. Hopefully um, they could get some relief soon in finding out what happened to Alberto Rodriguez. And um, if I could just get a moment of silence um, from everyone. If, can you guys hear me? Just a moment of silence for all the people that fell in, in Springfield in uh, uh, Western Mass to violence. If we can get a moment of silence. We need more rallies like this. More rallies of, of peace. You know, we need that. Because, and, and what I've learned is no one can do it alone. That's why we have this amazing group that was formed, uh, Justice for Charles. Um, and it's, it ranges from, you heard Imam and Lucinda say, uh, PhD students, um, activists, 
uh, Michael Land, yo, you guys, man, it's just, I'm getting emotional, so I'm, I'm gonna really kind of wrap it up, but what I want to say is that... No one can do it alone. You know, I mean, I think about uh, back in the 60s when um, MLK, when they when they held the marches. It wasn't, and people can always remember, it wasn't about, um, he, he was a man about the people. So we need to carry that same message today, that it's about the people. It's not about black and white, even though, you know, you can go through this thing about privilege and unprivileged, but today it's about peace. So if everyone can find the person next to you and, and, and introduce yourself, tell them your name, tell them, tell them why you're here. That, I think that's most meaningful. And go back and tell someone that didn't come the reason why you came, and hopefully it'll be a humbling experience to the people that came out. Certainly on behalf of my mother, Charles, he, he, he's, he's, he's like really concerned about is are people going to come together? Are people going to hear what happened to him? Are people going to um, do something about this? He can't wait to be out so he can start doing something about this. You know, because it's about the people and it's about us. You guys rock. Thank you for coming out. My name is Lois Aarons and I'm from the Real Fox Prison Project. And uh, Maurice is going to fix me up here. Okay. Um, I appreciate you letting me speak today. Um, I'm new to the campaign to, char to free Charles Will Knight, and I'm just learning about all of the great work that's being done by Vera and Ed Cage and Charles's family and all of his supporters. And I also want to acknowledge the members of Alberto Rodriguez's family who've come forward uh, to speak the truth as Charles's family has. And I'm hoping that this truth-telling uh, sends a powerful message to the DA and to the police and to the judge, and I hope that people are listening. Um, I've been asked to speak about the statistics about what is happening here in Massachusetts and Springfield. And before you fall asleep, I'm not going to just be talking about the statistics. Um, I want I want to tell you some, and I want to tell you what I think is important for you to remember. And um, that is not only that in Massachusetts right now there are 12,000 men and women in prison, and there are 12,000 men and women in jail. 24,000 people in Massachusetts. Not only that, um, each year our taxes, income taxes, taxes on gasoline, taxes on everything we buy that are not clothes and not food, goes to pay $1.1 billion that Massachusetts spends every year to keep people locked up. The Hamden County jails alone cost more than $68 million, and they're about to cost more. Do you think this is a good investment for your money? No! No, hell no! Thank you. When was the last time anyone asked you if you agree with locking so many people up? When? <laughs> Yesterday and every day, decisions are being made that affect you, your friends, and relatives. For example, Sheriff Ash is building what he calls an expanded jail for women in Chicopee. That jail will have cell space for 128 more women. The current jail has never been full. But Ash wants more. The cost of building the jail will be at least $14 million. But that's a fraction of what it will cost. Since keeping a woman locked up in that jail costs $37,000 a year. And who's locked up there? More than 80% of the women locked up are there for drug offenses. 33% of all the women there were homeless when they were arrested. 85% of the women in the jail are mothers. 
More than 50 women at any given time in that jail are there because they can't make bail. Bail is little as $50. That's who's in the jail. I'm asking you to question. When you hear people saying, if it wasn't for the jail, he or she would be dead. That the jail can save someone. This is true, and this is always will always be true if jail is the only alternative. A lot can be bought for thirty-seven thousand dollars to cage one person in jail for a year, and forty-seven thousand dollars per person to keep someone in prison for a year in Massachusetts. Good long-term community-based care that isn't run by the sheriff can be bought. Drug treatment and health care and quality housing and quality job training and good education and child care can be bought. Think about think about eighty thousand dollars invested for one person for two years. Now multiply that eighty thousand dollars, not going to the sheriff, not going to the Department of Corrections, by the thousands of people from Springfield in jail and prison. What would that mean for this community in terms of real treatment, good housing, child care, and the number of jobs that could be created to provide this if it was all not being sunk down the hole of prisons and jails? jail in Chicopee is just, is just one that is in the works right now. The jail in Hampshire County is also being expanded. And three prisons are being planned for aging and dying prisoners. That's what money is going for. New prisons for aging and dying prisoners. Instead of letting people out. There's a three there's a new bond for five hundred and fifty million dollars just to build prisons and jails in Massachusetts. And that is happening right now as we speak, as we're here. Have you heard about this? No. No. You're not meant to hear about it. Last week, there was an article in the Springfield Republican about the expanded, quote, expanded jail for women in Chicopee. But it was as the machinery to start building the jail was there. The contracts had already been issued. The thing is a done deal. And then they run one article in the paper about it after the deal is done. And that's what's happening with all of these new jails and prisons in Massachusetts right now. One set of plans you might have heard about is the proposed law to bring three strikes to Massachusetts. Two different laws were passed in November. In the Senate, every single member of the Massachusetts Senate voted for it. Not one person voted against it. In the House, which was an equally bad bill, 146 people voted for it. Only 12 people voted against it. Eight of those people were from the Black and Latino Caucus. Only four white people voted against it. Four. But it passed overwhelmingly. Ben Swan, your representative, or some of your representatives, was one of the people that, the only person from Springfield that voted against it. And he and other people in the Black and Latino Caucus have been leading the fight against three strikes. And there is a huge statewide effort going to stop three strikes. And it's happening right now. If passed, as, as they proposed it, all 655 felonies would be considered a third strike. Now that list, because of organizing, has dropped to 26 felonies. But 26 is still 26 too many. We need to defeat three strikes. 
We need to tell the governor. We need to tell our senators and reps. We don't want three strikes. In that same bill, there have been different proposals to reduce school zones from 100, school zone sentences, from 100 to maybe 300 or 100 feet. And there are also reforms for mandatory drug sentences. But what the governor and other people are saying is, we'll, we'll, we'll be willing to reduce some mandatory drug sentences so that we can have more room for people for three strikes. That's the deal they're trying to do. And what we need to tell people is, is we need the changes in mandatory drug sentences. We need to get rid of school zones, but we don't want three strikes. And we don't want those two things, that deal, that link being made. Because that is a really bad link. The important thing, or one other important thing for you to know about the Three Strikes Bill is that it gives even more power to district attorneys. More power than they already have in deciding who to charge, what kind, and what kind of charges they'll be, how many charges they'll be, just like they do now when they use school zones, only more they will be able to load up even more charges to get people to take pleas, pleas where the consequences of those pleas are never explained to anybody, pleas with long sentences, as you know. The three strikes bill gives DAs more power to charge, to charge someone because they are the ones that will charge somebody under three strikes. DAs do not need more power. DAs are holding all of the power right now. All of the power. Decisions are being made right now that at the Three Strikes is in committee that will decide what to include and what not to include. The bill will give DAs more power. It will sentence people to much longer sentences without parole. It will sentence many, many more people to life without the possibility of parole. Both. All of that. They are really bad bills. Three strikes will sweep up even more people in an even bigger net than the net that is being used right now. It is a really big net. That's the purpose of it. The governor needs to hear from you. There's information on that table right there about how you can contact him. On the and, and, and how to contact your legislators. Your friends and family need to hear from you about what is going on. It is, as everybody said, way past time to get organized. If you think that your silence doesn't send a message, it does, and so does your voice. And I encourage you to use your voice.